I freaking love it. What's up, it's Casey from Casey's Customs. I'm taking my 1969 Chevy long bed truck and I'm turning it into a convertible blazer. In this video, I cut the hell out of the bed and we start fabricating the blazer body. Let's go. We are back on our 69 blazer conversion. Obviously that is not it behind me, but it's gonna be coming in the shop pretty soon. I finally found a top. It's actually from a buddy who is bringing it to me. The reason the top is so important is the top shows me how much I need to cut down the bed to essentially turn the bed into the quarter panels. I have a ton of measurements online, so I have a pretty good idea on how much I need to cut. But there's nothing like having the roof that's gonna sit on top of the bed to measure it from where I know it will be absolutely perfect. My buddy is coming from eight hours away. Here is some of their footage here and of us unloading it. Then we're gonna get right to work. More yeah. You ready? Yeah. Just, I was looking at this thing, it looks so short. It don't look so short now. <laughs> Check it out. We just got the top delivered. I'm so happy. We can start cutting up the bed now. It's currently, I think, 10 degrees outside. I'm freezing my ass off. We're gonna pull the bed in and start cutting the hell out of it. Okay, got her in. She is all cleaned up. It's time to start cutting it up. I'm gonna unbolt everything as much as I can. Unbolt the tailgate, unbolt this front header panel. I technically should be able to unbolt the bed sides. I think they have spot welds and carriage bolts. They look rusty as hell though, so I don't know. I'm gonna attempt to unbolt everything and then probably after 10 minutes, it'll be time to cut shit. <laughs> so let's see how it goes. I. I've only taken a bedside off one of these years ago. I've probably had 15 of these trucks and anytime they were rusty, I would just do, you know, like patch panels on the bed. I only put one full bedside on one. And I think I unbolted everything off of it, but uh, we're gonna find out right now. Also, I have got to stop uh, setting stuff on this Mustang. The old man has it really close. Body lines are still shitty. We gotta do some uh, fine tuning with that, but uh, it's pretty goddamn close and he is not happy that I keep doing this. And sure enough, here I am still doing it. So yeah, we, we might need to start putting shit over on the bench. <laughs> All right, let's unbolt some shit. Tailgate has been a pain in the ass because of the rust. Okay, I have unbolted everything that will unbolt. These all came off here, which gave me a false sense of confidence. And I was like, yes, everything's gonna come apart perfectly. Every single bolt that I tried after that just spun. It's rusty, it's too shitty. The anchor bolt on the top is just spinning. So yeah, pain in the ass. Here's the bad thing. There is probably a hundred bolts left. That is nice that we got to unbolt 10 of them, but there's still a hundred left. The way you gotta do these, I'm gonna have to cut some of them, like these carriage bolts, anchor bolts, whatever you wanna call them. You have to grind the tops off of those and then beat them down with a punch. It's gonna be a real pain in the ass. Good news is, we got lots of cut off wheels and lots of flap discs, so let's quit whining and get to work. I'm not 100% sure, but I think my front panel is free. I'm about to do something very stupid. So naturally, make sure we turn the camera on. 
I want to see if I can just tip this. It's a pain in the ass trying to cut all these bolts out underneath. I don't know if I can, it's a pretty heavy bit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Not looking good. Oh, also, it's probably gonna hit my roof. Well, I can't make this shut up. I got this completely taken off. I got everything chiseled off, got everything cut off. It's essentially loose other than one big ass bolt down in there that's rusted solid. I can't get my cutoff wheel to it, so I had to chisel it off and I just broke my chisel. <laughs> <laughs> it got wedged in there so hard I had to hit it out with a hammer. It went from bad to worse. So, <laughs> I'm done for the day. It's the end of the day anyway. But uh, I can't believe that there's one bolt holding this whole side on. Like I suspected whenever there was no more pressure from the two sides, that front basically is out too. That's all right. We'll tackle it tomorrow. I'm going to go to Harbor Freight and uh, buy a new chisel because I'm definitely going to need it tomorrow. I think... I don't know, there's probably 20 or so on each side. I mean, you can grind 15 of them, but the rest of them you gotta chisel because they're in weird corners and shit. But uh, like I said, this one, this side's already off. It looks pretty good. That's one hell of a stopping point. So frustrated too. <laughs> Just, I mean, I've been working on that. I got all that done in 30 minutes, and then I spent another 30 minutes trying to get that bolt and didn't get it done. So, very annoying. But we'll be back tomorrow, baby. The next day. All right, check it out. Got a brand new air chisel. I went ahead and bought some new chisels for it too. I got a really nice pick chisel that I think is gonna come in handy. There's two bolts that need to get sheared off here because I can't get them undone with a socket. And then there's one seam weld right down in there that I can get. And this whole side should come off and the front's about ready to fall off anyway. So let's just jump right in and let's get to it. Okay. And then I think we're good. You're on borrowed time, man. That's the third time in like two weeks, you son of a bitch. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, okay, got this side off. This is actually not as bad as I thought it was. There is some rust in a couple of the braces and usually where this lip is can get really bad, but this is fine. I'm actually really happy with that. Now we gotta do it on the other side. Let's go. All right, so I got the tops of all the carriage bolts or anchor bolts, whatever the hell they're called. I got those all cut off with the cutoff wheel. I'm gonna go in with my flap disc now and grind off the tops of them the rest of the way. And then we'll just pop them right out. Beautiful. Uh, you probably shouldn't be, you know, on that side of the table whenever there's no weight on the other side. I damn near got it all the way cut. It actually, you can see the flex in it. I gotta grind it some more and then we'll pop it off. <laughs> this is 
been a giant head in the ass, let me tell you. But I should be good now on this. Okay, finally got the bed disassembled. I never thought in a million years that was gonna be like a 20 hour job, but holy shit, what a pain in the ass. Good news is it's done. What we're gonna do now, the goal for this video is I wanted to turn my bed sides into quarter panels because they're essentially a quarter panel whenever they are part of the blazer. What we need to do is one, get it disassembled, two, cut the bed sides down. I gotta take eight inches out of the back of it, and then I can't remember the measurement in the front, but you essentially just cut it until it fits to the blazer chassis, if that makes any sense. So basically you'll end up cutting it probably like right here somewhere. The eight inches out of the back has to be perfect though, because you're butt welding it back together and then it'll be your shortened quarter panel. Also, I need to take the wheel wells out I could technically leave these if it was a stock truck, but since we're gonna be bagging it and trying to lay it on the ground, I'm gonna have to modify those anyway, so I might as well pop them off now. And if they've went anything like the rest of this bed, I'm probably gonna have to cut every single one of those bolts out and then probably air chisel it out. Let's just dig in. I, like I said, I had so much planned for this video and I'm just three days in just to be here. But let's quit bitching and get to work. Both of those wheel wells, I only had to cut two bolts. Everything actually unbolted the way it was supposed to. Love that! So I did this the other day on the frame whenever I was shortening the frame and a couple people loved it, so I figured I'd do it again. I need to take eight inches out of this bedside. What you need to do, obviously, is take an eight inch section out, cut it. The way you can do it, there's a million different ways to skin a cap, first off. The way you can do it is get your tape measure, you know, mark tape eight inches, a hundred different times. The only bad thing with that is your tape measure can flex. You can be holding it crooked, all kinds of shit like that. Also, like over here, it doesn't really want to stand up on its own. So I kind of got to hold it, pain in the ass. What I like to do with situations like this is find a piece of metal, and make it the eight inches. Check it, exactly eight inches. So what I can do now, I know this is exactly eight inches. I can just take it and use it as my measurement. Super easy little trick. It's not even a trick, it's just kind of something I do. Makes life really easy. There's no variables. I know this is gonna be the exact same no matter what I cut it. So I don't have to worry about holding my tape measure crooked or anything like that, or trying to hold it with two hands. Sit it right here, bada bing, we're good to go. All right, let's cut some shit, baby. Here, listen. Looks like you got that cut in half there. <laughs> Very observant. Listen, push down this. I need these to be nut to butt. Nut to butt. Yeah, push easy. No, no, up here, up here. I might have to undo that. There you go. There you go. Right yeah, but look how big that gap got down there. Look at this. Look at this. No, look how big our gap got down there when you did that. Well, do you have this? That's what I'm saying. We might need to let go of that. Let me use my knee. Should close now, whatever that should be able to put metal behind there if it's close. 
Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me let this down. See if this is up. Hold it up. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn it. It went back. <laughs> Pull it again. No, what happened? Well, I don't know what we did. I got things. There it is. Do it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Give me a weld. No, I can't turn it up too hard. All right, I think we're going to go. Well, the bed. Ah, could be a baby. Ow, ow. Perfect. Yeah, baby! <laughs> I've been holding it up with the jack. I have six different C clamps on it. It's still going to be right. That's perfect. You all right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for helping me push it in. What do you think about the old girl? Sure is short. They are a little bitty thing. <laughs> we were pushing it in going, boy, did I fuck something? No, it's 103 wheelbase. It's perfect. It's fine. Everything's great. What? Yeah, I haven't stopped setting things on the bar, have you? Well, I, I was working on it. I didn't know that was over there. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, these were soft. Uh -huh. I mean, the paint can wasn't very soft. <laughs> Shit, there's more stuff back there. <laughs> Well, <laughs> well, okay. Well, all right, we're gonna turn the camera off. Check this out. Finally decided on a paint color for the Mustang. Oh, damn. <laughs> Look at that. When it goes over a black base coat, it'll be a lot darker, but root beer, candy, orange. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna be honest with you. The old man just left. I called him to have him come help me push the blazer in, and I completely could have moved all the shit off the car but i wasn't thinking about it i was moving all the stuff i also had him hold the bedside while i was welding it and he kept looking over at the car and i wasn't thinking anything about it and then all of a sudden he was like what's all this shit not good also he was kind of chuckling on camera he was actually pissed because there's a pretty good scratch on the trunk from something so yeah definitely got to get better about that it is what it is i got the blazer in finally now what we're gonna do because i don't have a ton of time i was sick all week last week and it's kind of thrown a wrench and shit i didn't realize it was gonna take me three days to break this bed apart because it was such a piece of shit what i'm gonna do i have all my airbag stuff in i'm gonna open the boxes here in a minute but what I'm going to do is I want to get one bedside up there the way it's supposed to be, like a blazer bedside. And I want to get it laying on the ground. I'm going to cut all the old springs out because I'm not using them anyway. I already started on the rears. We're going to get it laying on the ground. We're going to get the bedside semi-mounted. And then we can kind of get a good look at it and that'll be a good end to the video. I got a lot of shit to do. I also need to move it over a little bit more. So let's get to work. And uh, then we're going to start getting rid of the springs and I'll start opening up all the airbag shit. So I had to cut the mount because the mounts the spring mount bolt is just rusty completely solid i had to cut it on the driver's side i started cutting the passenger side and realized the little perch mount is actually rusted out i think i can just pull this spring out by itself and i might have spoke too soon come on with me come on there we go Now, funny enough, that's actually not as low as it's going to go because we're going to end up C-notch in the rear. But uh, it does look funny for now. So let's go do the front real quick. <laughs> By the way, the front will not be nearly as easy as the rear was, but uh, that's fine. We'll deal with it. It's by far the best way to do this. If you're ever not taking it apart, obviously the right way, is to you know undo all this but a nice way to get it out without you know having any danger is use a plasma cut it just a couple coils at a time so it's not releasing all of the pressure at once and then once you got a couple coils cut out you just take it out coil by time Kind of like the worst puzzle ever because this thing is still kind of attached. But. I see people when they do this, if they ever try and cut them out, you know, there's videos on the internet. You see a guy cutting like right there. That's the craziest thing I've ever seen. If this was a full 
spraying, and you have to cut it out. Like I said, there's better ways to do this, but if you have a plasma, this is pretty nice. Considering everything is still together, nothing can explode. So you just cut a coil there, cut a coil there, and it'll drop. Almost no pressure on anything, no chance of getting hurt, and you just pull it out. And now both of my springs are out. <coughs> Took 15 minutes. Now, some people might ask, well, you might not have a good angle. Let me get up here. Okay, so that is no suspension. Somebody might ask, why the hell did you just take the suspension out of your car? Because we're gonna be bagging this truck and I wanna see how low it is with my stock suspension out. And what I mean by that is how far stuff will travel without the bag getting in the way, if that makes any sense. And as you can see, this thing is still eight inches off the ground, probably, maybe more. I do still have the bump stops in, which is like two full inches, we'll cut those out. I was afraid this was gonna happen. Uh, that's just not gonna be low enough. I'm okay, it doesn't have to be the lowest thing ever, but I do want it lower than this because we're gonna be running bigger wheels. So what we're gonna do is, there's a couple things you can do. There's three inch drop spindles that will get that another three inches, which is nice. And in the back, you can cut the frame up. You can technically cut the frame in the front as well. I just didn't really want to do that very badly. You can also sink the body down on the frame, which is something uh, I might do as well. Somebody said, I think the bushings, I think somebody said the bushings are two inches or two or three inches, and you can drop those down to like a half inch nylon bushing, the body bushing, and that will just bring everything down a bunch. So we got a couple different ways. I'm basically gonna get it as low as I can without cutting the front frame. It's not the end of the world to cut the front frame, but you really should have the motor out. You should have the body out. I don't want to do any of that. I have no problem cutting up the rear frame because it's all wide open and very easy to get to, but I don't want to cut the frame, the front frame very much. So this is actually really good. It's kind of a basis where I can get an idea on what we need to do. I definitely need to order drop spindles, which I thought I did anyway, but I definitely need to now. And uh, we're going to end up doing a C-notch in the rear. So this is good to know. I was gonna get all my airbag stuff out, but I'm just gonna show that at the end of the video. What I wanna do now is get my bedside put on this car. I did the driver's side for a reason, so I could get it put up there and kind of see what it looks like. Now, to do it the right way, I need to cut all of the back of the cab off. Obviously, this doesn't need to be here anymore whenever it's a blazer. I'm not gonna do all that today, though. I'm gonna use this as a structure. I can run a sheet metal screw in whenever I put my bedside up there. I don't know what I'm gonna do for the rear yet. I might just have to hold it up with a jack for now, but I wanna see what it looks like. Just kind of get a visual of it so we can see what we need to do going forward. Also, I'm crunched for time, so uh, we're trying to kind of get this done as quick as I can. Being sick for like eight or nine days really makes the content struggle for the next, you know, two videos. But uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Also, even though this isn't quite as low as I'd like, it still looks awesome. I'm really happy with it. I just wanted to put that in there. But uh, let's see if I can get this bedside mounted real quick. Check this out. <laughs> Looks good. Looks like my wheelbase is off about an inch, so I just need to trim that, which will be good because that would mount up there better, but all that's gonna end up getting changed later. I am so happy with how this looks. I started today at 9 a.m. and it's like midnight. It's been a long one, but that looks pretty bitchin'. I think, think I might, hmm, I think I might go ahead, trim that inch off, move this forward, and then just stick some sheet metal screws in it and call it a video. I might end up rolling it out tomorrow if we have time and see what it looks like, but uh, <laughs> it looks pretty bitchin'. Let's cut it real quick. Fuck that, fuck it, we're already here, let's do it. Check it out, got it trimmed. Wheelbase is perfect. Bed, I gotta quit calling it a bed. It's not a bedside anymore. The quarter panel is level. I'm not welding anything yet, obviously, because I wanna get on my other side done. I am gonna put some sheet metal screws in it so I know exactly where it goes. Yeah, I'm stoked. We'll take some pictures of it whenever it's all done. Woo, she looks good. All right, let's screw it up. <laughs> I'm gonna pop this off and we'll take a look at it. So I keep saying that I'm done and then I keep working and I should have been home two hours ago. My wife is gonna kick my ass. But I gotta get this done. All right, let's see. We should be free now. <laughs> it's sitting on its own. <laughs> 
Check it out. Just threw some quick angle or some quick square tubing up there to hold it up, but that'll give you an idea. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna try and roll it out tomorrow. It'll actually roll now, but for some reason I don't get it rolled out. Check that thing out. I'm gonna clean the shop a little bit and we'll get a look at it, but uh, I'm so freaking happy. <laughs> Check this out. I'm gonna pull the old girl outside and see how she looks. I wanted to open up my kit to make sure I have everything. One thing I do like about this kit is the brackets are really small, which is gonna give me a lot of drop. I shouldn't have to modify them too much, I don't think. Where is the A frame? Oh, there it is. Yeah, so these are your A arms. And I believe that one is your top A arm. Cool, those look great. I definitely need to order some fittings. I have a ton of fittings, but um, I didn't realize this one had such giant holes in the front. So need to order a couple more parts, but really, really happy. The only thing is, um, like I said earlier, this has no suspension on it right now and it's not really as low as I'd like it. It still has bump stops on it, so it'll come down another probably two inches, but I still would like it to get, if we're gonna run bigger wheels, I want it to get a lot more down. So I know we need to order a frame notch for the rear and I was reading and it sounds like the stock A-arms just won't get super low. So I might have to order a four link. I don't know, I'm gonna do some more reading on that before I decide. Um, and it looks like this cross member might need raised too. So. We definitely have a lot of work to do. I don't care if it's on the ground, but I definitely want it. If it's not going to be on the ground, I only want it like two inches above it. Because right now that's like 10 inches. It looks good, but it could be a ton lower. Good looking kit. Not too bad. This is one of the ones I pieced together. People always ask what kits I buy, and I never buy a complete kit. You can buy a complete kit for a 67 to 72 Chevy truck for like 1500 bucks, Or you can just buy the pieces. Like I bought the bags and the compressors in one, bought the tank by itself, bought the brackets by themselves. Basically, you can piece together a kit for about half of that, seven, eight hundred bucks. So I'll end up having more of it with the C-notch, but I'm in it pretty damn cheap and I'm happy about it. So pull this old girl outside, see how she looks. I freaking love it. <laughs> wow. That looks like nothing but fun, to be completely honest with you. Wait till it's down, down, down on the ground, too. What a cool truck. Sweet, man, this is fun. This thing was a long bed a week ago, whatever, two weeks ago. <laughs> now it is a very short blazer. We took 23 inches out of the frame. <laughs> cool, man. I am so excited with how this came out. It was, <laughs> we had a ton of hours in a very short amount of time because I was sick last week and it kind of threw a wrench in the production of our videos, but... Considering the fact that three days ago, that was a bed, you know, and now it's attached to the body and looks like, it's starting to look like the blazer. I am very, very excited. Also really happy to get the top. I don't know if anybody's ever looked at the tops on these, but I started seeing them on eBay for like three or four grand whenever I already kind of cut the truck up and I was going, holy crap. But luckily my buddies came through and I got one. I'm just so, so happy. If you are liking this build, stay tuned. This is going to be my new weekly build series here on the channel. If you are not already subscribed, hit that button now. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, comment, all that good stuff they tell you with the end of videos and check out some more of my other videos. Peace. Love ya. I